you're not when you first meet them you're who you are right and um they apparently like that person oh yeah yeah okay but then little by little there's you find out there's one thing they don't really like about you so okay uh then there's another thing and then there's another thing and then before you know it you're you're lying you created a liar i can't tell you where i'm really going because you don't like the fact that i i'm in fantasy football i have fun when when you're not around with you without you yeah yo what's up square pin brigade on this episode we have comedian and good friend of mine mark de mayo as we discuss how to take care of yourself as you get older dealing with jealous women why you can never have enough and how to really understand what your self-worth is and how that sometimes women ain't as they're not good enough for you which is i think something that we don't talk about enough um don't forget the patreon please check out the patreon y'all it's the way we keep this going if we like what we're doing i've hear this all the time that the show helps you and stuff please support us we're trying to get 500 uh patreon members so if you are could please tell a friend yeah. tell a friend Move and on. the patreon.com uh slash man school 202 that's where we do all the bonus content and we do a lot of heavy technical stuff on there too so people love that stuff for example on uh today's bonus episode we talk about time traveling and how you can actually turn one date into like three or four dates in one night and why that matters and how to you know how and how to effectively date better and a couple other dating tips as well on the uh, bonus show over at patreon.com slash manschool202 that's where you can support us and also if you want any consultations you can reach out to dantenero.com and click on consult or you can email me at advice from harry at gmail.com i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being <laughs> podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, now, I've, I've said that uh, 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. Um, first and foremost, Harry, what's popping? What's going on with you? Ready to oh, rock and roll? Man, of course I'm ready to rock and roll. I was born ready. I don't even know why you asked me that. No well, the, problem. The I mean, it's just format, you know formality. And rolling. Yeah. God damn it. A little formality. Um, my guest on today, uh, funny, funny dude, friend of mine for years. Um, funny comic, uh, white boys in the hood on Comedy Central, a uh, bunch of other stuff. Uh, ex police officer, ex one man show actor, shitload of stuff. Give it Former. up for my boy Mark DeMayo, yo. What up, Marky? How you been, bro? Hey, what's up, Dante uh, and Harry? I just got to tell you, I was thinking about you the other night, yeah, Dante. And um, I don't know, man. I, I love you guys, and I'm gonna miss you. I am. Um, too. I'm, I'm gonna well, like stay I wide. This. Well, we stay talked wide. about this before we went on. I'm yeah, gonna be yeah. moving to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but just thinking about how many how many times we had, man, that freaking gig in the Hamptons, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, uh, we can't even talk about that night. That's it. That's a. Yeah. Uh, the the, the, the statute of limitations hasn't run out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I could still get jammed up for that one. But <laughs> yeah, man, I was, I was really thinking about you, man. I went down this. I forgot what was the lure in. I remembered yesterday, but then I went down this. Oh, uh, what happened was I saw a jeep outside from. Oh and, yeah. yeah. Uh, and somebody mentioned to me, pointed it out. Oh, what a nice Jeep that is! I said, "Oh, my friend's got one just like that, right. and he's got his face on the side of it." Right. So he goes, "Really?" I said, "Yeah, let me show you." And then we started looking at your car, right, right. and and how nice that was. And then um, then I just went down this rabbit hole. Of, I just fu- looking at pictures of you, and uh, I was like, "Man, we go back a long way, bro." Yeah, man, good lot of good times, bro. A lot of lot of good times. I don't know if you remember the first time I met you. You remember when I first met you? No. Sylvia's soul food restaurant. Really? Yeah. Why is it Sylvia's? I mean, you're both comics. Was there a show going on over there? Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was when we were doing black rooms, a lot of black yeah. rooms. And uh-huh. Sylvia's, Sylvia's was with Cortez, and uh, they used to Sylvia's restaurant. It's a famous soul food that's restaurant a, in that's Brooklyn. One of the most in, in Harlem. Uh, yeah. Wasn't Syl- not the Sylvia's in Harlem? Was Sylvia's on? Oh, gotcha. On Decalb Avenue. Remember the the? the uh, or was it was it two steps down? Could it two been two steps down? 
Could have it was might have been two. Yeah, it was two steps two steps down. Yeah. John Lasters room. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. That was a great room, man. Yeah. Yeah. We had a ball. We had I a mean, ball. That whole Brooklyn scene, man, was so uh, between two steps down and the Palm Court and pork knockers. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. Um, that was a rough one. Pork oh, knockers. Yeah. Was rough. I, I had a, I had a rough night in pork knockers. I was doing well, man. And then Donnell uh, yelled at me one night. He's like, yo, what are you doing, bro? You know you don't do that here. <laughs> I fucking hate my... <laughs> I started, I got, I got cocky because um, he did a recording one night, Donnell, and he recorded the whole show. And then he started selling it. It was called Bootleg Comedy Volume 1. Oh, yeah. oh wow. And he gave me like a box of them to sell. Uh-huh. Just keep all the money, you know, whatever I, whatever me, you say, whatever yeah, I wanted yeah. to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Now I'm cocky. Now I'm going up there. I'm going up there. I'm not firing. You know, I'm just yeah, taking yeah, my yeah. time. I'm gonna, and then it's just boo. How like, long man. were you in? How long were you in doing comedy by then? I don't know, two or three years, man. Yeah, yeah. I think you got two more, two more than me. What's funny is uh I got 25 or um, better. Yeah, I'm 25. I'm 22. 22. Um it's funny because uh Darnell, Darnell uh, uh formerly Ashley Larry, because he's, yeah, he's yeah, giving yeah. up that moniker. So uh, I was the pork knockers the day that they tried to to extort Mike Epps. So really, yeah. So Mike Epps said messed with some girl or did something to some girl or something, and her 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 uh, her cousins was World. World was one of the big hustlers in Brooklyn, and they uh, they had Mike. Um, had Mike in a in a chair, like tied, like tied up in a chair, and uh, really, and Darnell, and and yeah, they were yeah, they was they were trying to extort him. This is when Mike first started picking up, start doing movies and stuff. Like mm-hmm. after after, so he how do did you get Fridays. involved in this whole situation? I was think? just uh, it's Brooklyn. It was pork knockers. I was there, and, and I knew world. I knew world, and I knew. But I remember Don, you know, they were like, yo, we, you know, they were like talking that we're going to shoot this motherfucker. And uh, Darnell <laughs> says, nah, nah. <laughs> Darnell <laughs> says, nah, nah, yo, don't, 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 yo, what are you doing? Right. Uh-huh. And he goes, he, the world goes to Darnell, you vouching for this motherfucker? And Darnell's like, I ain't vouching for him, but I just told you. <laughs> so they had they they tried to extort my gaps for like seventy five thousand dollars. I think the number was or somewhere around that. Mm-hmm. And then my gaps never came back to Brooklyn after that because <laughs> he had he had just taken off where he was doing movies and stuff. So. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that this kind of stuff goes on. I, I was. I was listening to uh, Boozy talk about not being able to go to California anymore. Because right. if you're a rapper, you go to California, you're going to get robbed. That's it. Yeah. There's no questions about it. They find out where you are, they come and rob you. Yeah. At gunpoint, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So he, he says he rolls 10 deep, he comes in, does his thing, he's leaving, leaving the next morning. He's not yeah. going to no clubs, no nothing. It's crazy the way the world is nowadays like that. Yeah, but 90s was worse than that. We We, we were doing this, you know. 90s, eight, you know, what I mean, we were running around in Brooklyn in the 80s and 90s. It was way worse than this. There was yeah. no Starbucks and no cafes. Mm-hmm. No, like I always say this, I don't know how you feel about this. You remember when they when the biggest thing was the Beats headphones? Yeah. So like it used to it just used to make me angry that kids were walking around with Beats headphones because it was so rec- the, the marketing was so recognizable with the red cord and the, mm-hmm. the B on the side. So you, you're a young kid and you walking around with a $500 headphones on your head. Right. And you like, you could never do that in nineties of, 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 of Brooklyn. You, I mean, you, you get murdered doing that. I mean, that's when I was shooting people for eight ball jackets and, and, sheepskins and stuff so it just there, yeah i i understand what you're saying and there is the, a definitely trade-off like yeah. the other day this guy was telling me oh i wouldn't park it's uh the friday after thanksgiving they the meter maids come around here like crazy yeah but i just had to run in there for two seconds but i i, I knew in my head that they're not out there like that anymore yeah yeah part, <laughs> so you when when law and order goes the wayside there's, there is a silver, a thin silver lining through it. Like, right. For example, 
these pe- these uh, traffic agents, they don't have that. Uh, they don't have to write as much as they used to. Okay. So they're not. There's not that pressure. So if, not if aggressive. Around, yeah. Trying to I mean, make these quotas and stuff. They're not like running around there. Why so isn't that? Why don't they anymore? Uh, Mark, what's the deal with that? Every, not showing them. Well, uh, well, they used to have the when everything is law and order, and you know, keep your 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 your, uh, your beer in a bag and don't piss on the tree and no smoking pot. All that shit is by the wayside. Some of the bit that goes with it is the meter maids. They don't have to write that much anymore, or there's mm-hmm. no quota the right. way it used to be. So they're kind of leadable lenient, and they they write the ones they have to if nobody's around. Mm-hmm. You know, justify their existence, but it's not like before. Yeah, they so have there a is that quota. Yeah, there is a a little benefit to this. Uh, you yeah. Know, well, also the the you know, like you're talking about when you're talking about Boosie going and saying he can't go to L.A. It, you, it, he's on some shit where like it can't. He, you know, he's they're trying to rob him of money, like big mm-hmm. money. It's not like Penny Annie, like you get knocked in the head, you know, you could get knocked in the head for, for an iPod. Mm-hmm. You ever notice I said not even iPad, iPod, which <laughs> they don't even have that anymore. <laughs> uh-huh. So you, you know, I mean, if you had an iPod, you get the black headphones because if they could see the white headphones, you get knocked in the head for that. But, you know, it's, um, it, it but also you get a situation where, where middle-class people don't have a place to live. That the, the, the you know I mean you're gonna you're gonna be, I mean once you get out there and start grinding out in Vegas you're gonna buy a f- palace you're gonna get the place next to next to um what's his name uh who's got the zoo Harry who am I talking about um Steve Wynn no the the Hawaiian dude the no the dude with all the, the tan and oil and the Rolls Royces the Vegas dude who am I talking about oh um, um the singer. Yeah, Wayne Newton. Wayne you know, Newton. Wayne, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. you can get a place with <laughs> with with a hundred thousand dollars. You can get the place next to Wayne Newton. You know, so it's like the, the, your money goes so much farther. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm you getting. Know. That. I'm I'm on my way. I'm gonna go in December. Looking at the what it costs to rent. I have yeah. you know for twenty two hundred bucks, you can get two bedroom, two bath, uh, with a balcony. Mm-hmm. You know, in a in a gated community. Yeah. Um, amenities, pool, everything. All you know, uh, washer, dryer, dishwasher, mm. you know, um, pools, a gym, movie room, all this stuff. Or yeah, you could yeah. buy, you get a house. Yeah, for the same for for the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's you crazy. know, so yeah, I'm excited, man. It's crazy. It's good to see, you, bro. Uh, you still with your lady? Yeah. That that was um, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because me and me and Joe was talking about it. it was because like you were always a. Uh, because this is your second. You did you get remarry or no? No, we got engaged, but we got engaged. We didn't get, we didn't get married yet. Okay, uh, and it's going well. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's like uh, I, I remember, like <laughs> <laughs> as you you look like you're about to say something mean, but delicately. <laughs> no, nah, well, I remember because when 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 when. Uh-huh. when I just know Mark when he was first his first wife, mm. and we did a gig, and uh, we we're we we're doing a little doing some drugs, and then I'm like I go home, and I'm remember the guy gig we did with James Goff, and he yeah 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 that's that's a bad night yeah <laughs> and he and uh and Mark and I'm calling like it's like two o'clock and I'm calling Mark when I'm calling Mark yo because James was freaking out he was mad that whatever the fuck happened because of time or something I and uh, I, I, I call him and, like, and Mark picks up the phone and he hey wh- wh- what's up I was like yo where you at he's like yo I'm still in the parking lot <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there's a whole backstory to that that um but I I always apologize to James when I see him for that yeah uh listen everybody has a bad night once in a while yeah but yeah. you know I came up with this theory like what happened to me uh, I thought you were digging around the bush to like come up with something else but I have a f- this theory that what do you mean what a... happened to you like what what, what are you concerned like about, because man? all of a sudden I'm monogamous. All of a sudden, I have no interest in other women at all. I'm I'm comfortable. I love this. Now. Where, yeah, now. yeah, yeah. And I really think, and I tell people this all the time, I say we got a certain amount of loads in us, men do. 
And me, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking, but I got rid of mine real early in life. Yeah. You know, I was tall. I was handsome, full head of hair. I was I was doing it. Right. And then I tell the older guy, you you could probably go on until you're 75 because right. you wasn't doing shit with your whole youth. Right, 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 <laughs> That's right. That's why right. you're 50, 55, 60 years old and you're still, still, still looking. Still going out. I said, I don't want to be no, I don't want to be out at all. Right. Anywhere. And even if I was, all I'd be thinking about is, man, I wish I was home, you know, just chilling in front of my TV. I, it, as far as um, trying to go somewhere to, to pick up chicks, it's just, uh, it's not even something that I, I would think about. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. It, do you, it, did you, well, first of all, did you get your testosterone checked? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that is that I did get some pills. Uh, mm. I did this thing online, you know, the doctor was great, by the way. I never met him mm. or saw his face, but he did ask me a couple questions and then they send you drugs online. <laughs> it's just like, you know, yeah. one of those, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they use, you're seeing a doctor, they ask you three questions and I got yeah. these testosterone pills and you know, I never thought they'd be working, but all of a sudden I put on all this weight. Like, and I'm like, like I couldn't even like touch my shoulders again. And oh, I was like, you were oh. still working out and stuff. No, no, I wasn't working out, but I felt like I was, I was waking up strong every day. Yeah. 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 I felt like my hair was falling out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, too much testosterone will cause your hair to fall out. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's like, I was, I was already, I knew I was probably low. So I said, let me, just as I'm aging, I'm 55. Let me get a boost, bring me up my strength, this, that, and the other. And I didn't, I never thought about it, but they actually worked. And I had gained like 10 pounds. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. least 10 pounds of like, yeah. and I don't know if it's muscle, whatever that is, but I fucking walking around feeling strong. Yeah, yeah. It makes, you know a, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, so I stopped doing that shit. I don't want to lose my hair. Fuck it. Yeah, I, uh, I, it definitely takes the wolf out of you, though, the lower testosterone i just did a thing where i was i talked about it on the show before where they pellet you they put a pellet they cut up make an incision and they put a pellet in your buttocks and it's like uh it stimulates the testosterone uh production in your body and you do it for six months at a time so like when we were running around crazy chasing tail you know your 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 you know your your testosterone like the average number is at like uh, 800, like a 20 year old guy, 25 year old is at 800, 900, like that. And I had got my, I got a blood test and I had it checked and mine was like at 165. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to do nothing. But it also, you know, you, it's hard to lose, harder to lose weight. It's harder to, you know, just everything. The problem is when you do the synthetic tests, what happens is you got a blood dump. I mean, you know, we both, fucked around back in the days on a cycle here and there but you're supposed to blood dump because it you know tests thickens your uh thickens your blood that's you know your blood pressure goes up it thickens your blood and whatever and so once a month you're supposed to give blood to dump to thin the blood out again and if you don't do that i mean you don't have to worry about that as a younger dude but as an older dude this is how a lot of dudes get strokes and stuff mm. bloods get thicker they don't dump but this what is, is a natural blood, though. What is dumping blood? How does that it's work? like you give blood? You go give you go donate blood at, oh, a, at a place. Your body has to build fresh blood. Right. Yeah. So it's it's thinner. It's it's not as thick. It moves more fluid and whatever. God, I've so never even get, heard that. That's crazy. So you get blood, you get blood thickeners in my your pressure. I mean, times back in the days when I've done a cycle or something like that. You you know you, my pressure. I always had pressure, and my pressure would go up and be through the roof. But I would be putting on weight. I would feel you know you feel strong and shit and mm -hmm. whatever. But this is kind of a, a natural stimulation for the thing, and it, and it really works because you get a blood test uh, after you get it done, like after six weeks, and then they tell you where your blood is. And if they if it's not where they want it to be, it they what they do is they put another pellet in that stimulates to get you up even they have some bodybuilders that are doing it um there's bodybuilders who are doing it at in and instead of tests mm -hmm. now so um but it's but you know you, you your blood thickens up and you can't but i mean it, it helps you lose weight clarity of mind is supposed to protect your heart too from heart attack even women get a smaller version of it 
So like older women who get hot flashes and stuff, it fixes their hot flashes and the mood swings kind of evens them out. So I've been doing that for like about a, about two months now and I'm a different person back in the gym working out. And Is that you know, something you have to, um, you got to pay out of pocket for it? You, you got to pay out of pocket, but it's, it, it lasts for six months though. Mm-hmm. So it's a six months clip and then you do it all the way to six months and then they put another one in another six months. So it's twice a year, like seven fifty, about seven fifty. Um, but I mean, if you want, we'll talk about it. Um, if you want to try, it's supposed to be better for you, gets the test up, loses helps you lose weight, and then they give you peptides, peptides and stuff. Cause I my cousin has a as a she's a registered nurse and she opened a studio and she also was doing the um uh, the vitamin infusion, intravenous vitamin infusion. Mm-hmm. So like her business really blew up from the COVID because people were doing vitamin C infusions mm-hmm. to protect them, vitamin C and D. That's a hot thing them. right now, especially in Miami. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I go every two months and go, but, um, but it just feels, I mean, you just feel better. You don't have to be, you know, it don't have to, it doesn't have to be sucked to get old. You know what I mean? You can mm-hmm. still kind of maintain. Um, I know. I mean, I remember when you, um, when your fiance, I remember when you first met your fiance and it was like, um, she's younger than you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, 17 years. Yeah. And it was nice. The sweet spot. <laughs> they call it the sweet spot. <laughs> That's where you want to be. You don't want to go any younger. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's it's funny because, I mean, I remember her being very like kind of jealous and in your shit because of the fact that like who you were before that. And it was weird to me because you had changed so much in terms of being monogamous. I mean, it, just, it was weird how you found this woman and was like, I'm, it's it, like you were such a different person with her. Do you know what I mean? Like it was. So contrasting. What do you, what do you attribute that to, or 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 is that what we were talking about in the first place? I think it has to do with uh, genetics and, and mm-hmm. biology, really, because I I could have never saw this happening. Right. You could just, you just couldn't put me anywhere. Anywhere yeah. you put me, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for girls. Where are they? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And now it's the last thing I think about. It right. doesn't. It doesn't even it's it's an odd thing. And the only thing I can blame it is I didn't become a better person. Right. <laughs> I just don't have the, the the urge anymore. That drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't even know if I want it. Yeah. I'm so much happier right now. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, go get him, pal. Go, go get him. Because see, <laughs> to me, what was messing with me too was it's almost like when you're hooked on drugs. Yeah. And the drugs ain't doing what they used to do for you anymore. Okay. You know what I'm saying, but it's I become, mean the charge that you get from from chasing yeah, girls. Yeah, you have stuff. more. You have more downside. So I could see, I could see the end game. Like I, I never even had a moment where okay, at least I'm enjoy watching them get naked for me. It got to the point where um, that wasn't even enough to satisfy. All I kept thinking about is, well, how am I going to get rid of her? Yeah. What's the move now? Um, yeah. um, well, am I working in the morning? Do I have yeah. to? Go see my grandmother. Uh, my moving. I don't know what. I, it always. I, you always had to come up with a reason to get out of there, to end it. Uh, you know, the whole thing. What I don't even know what it was anymore. It just became yeah. just to make sure I can get you. Like a, it was yeah. like a. It's uh, a more it was a ego. Challenge. Thing. It was ego driven. Yeah. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was about um, manipulation. It was about then you you keep up in the stakes. You play games with yourself. Like how much money did I spend? How many dates did it take? Like if somebody's telling me like they 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 they've been together they you know they went on three dates I'm like three dates <laughs> <laughs> I just I just met her in the, we were at the bar and then I said walk into the bathroom we're in they the got, bathroom <laughs> yeah, they got long doors there <laughs> you know and you if ever not come? and if they don't have long doors I I, I knew where the long doors were. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about? Like you go to a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. You get, they don't have the way you can see the feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I knew where the long doors were. <laughs> and and uh, all over the city. Yeah. You frequent the long doors only. 
Well, it, you know, it was a good option. I, like, I oh, feel shit. like you would have went with a short door every once in a while, too. I mean, back you did what you days. had to do. If the if it was secure, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll well, take a, a nice selling pitch. Hey, they, I hear they got long doors over here. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll take a slap sink if I have to, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, won't we all? <laughs> We've all been there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was weird because... Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just when you talk about age and and I, I you know it's also maturity. I think to a certain extent, I I know it's there's certain of it. Is it nah. ego. no? You don't think? <laughs> I'm so? kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I I just there's a lot of like I mean I could be talking to some young girl and then she just and I go uh like mm -hmm. I'm 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 even thinking about how am I gonna get rid of her before I got her. You yeah, I mean? that's like, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. also, don't forget this fact too. Text messages brought a new dynamic into this thing. So let's say, for example, you are in a relationship now. There's a certain amount. There's a certain volume of text messaging you're going to be having with your 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 main girl, right? Right, right. And then now, all of a sudden, if you decide to take on another girl or three or four other girls, you got to you got to maintain that. That's that's a lot of texting right now. We're talking about. You don't even have much time to do anything else during the day if you're responding, um, if you haven't created a scenario where you can disappear for a while. Like yeah. you mentioned registered nurse. My son is a registered nurse. He goes to work. Mm -hmm. He's not on his phone for eight hours, you know right. what I'm saying? Because he's working. He, it's a very, right. very busy job. Right, right. Your, your girlfriend will understand a job like that. But you can't right. be doing like just I running around. I can't get you. When when can I text you? When yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. that it kind of sort of there's you're not giving them the opportunity to uh hijack your day but you're a comedian i yeah. i know your schedule you don't do yeah, shit yeah. all day until you got your show at night maybe you go to the gym for an hour there's no reason why you're not texting me back what the fuck yeah. is wrong with you, you know unless of course you set up that you have yeah. to you have to think ahead i i mean i i, I mean it's funny when my when, when i was my first wife right i i wore a ring on my ring finger before I got married mm -hmm. so that I wouldn't I would never have tan lines when I like, uh -huh. like I was I was so planning to just do dirt you know what I mean and uh -huh. in, in, in the first place that I was like well you know these are the things even when it comes to the texting and stuff like that I don't I, like I text when I want to text if I don't want to text I don't text if I don't want to be bothered, even if I'm dating somebody or whatever, it's mm -hmm. just I I'm I'm not gonna have you like because what women will do is they create that scenario where they where they they keep this consistency and then they expect that they that it's consistent any any like what you're saying is there any disruption in mm -hmm. their consistency says okay well what is he doing mm -hmm. so yeah. you know I used to tell dudes all the time. You know, be consistently inconsistent. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. But it go works the other way too. Sure, sure. If if your girl's not texting you back for several hours, of all of a sudden you're like, "What's going on?" Especially in a new relationship, you're both yeah. trying to set these boundaries about um, texting. But the problem is, in a new relationship. You're so excited to hear from her again. Yeah, that as soon as she texts you, go. you go right to the phone. And now yeah. all of a sudden, three or four months in, you're trying to change it. That's why yeah. you got to, right from the beginning, you got to let them know. Set up the, what the 10. What as the, much as I want to text you back, you make them wait. Make them wait three or four hours. You know what I'm saying? Then you yeah. text them back. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know when you send this, but I was uh, in a meeting or I had I was busy. Yeah. Um, just and then. Or, or now here's where I got to the point where like I'm gonna do what I do, and I'm not explaining nothing. And if mm. you you got a problem with that, then we could just not fuck around. Like I also, mm. and that kind of comes with my ability to, you know, I guess also not, not it's me to start understanding mm. that what I bring to the table far exceeds what I get back, and I don't mean that that you don't get something back from women to a certain extent. But as a man, there is always this thing that what we consider manhood as you take care of your woman, you make sure she's safe, you make sure that she's happy. You do. I mean, we exactly. don't feel, when we you're don't together, feel like, you, yeah. 
Go ahead. I'm when sorry. You together, you take care of them. Right, you right. Them like a million bucks. They're the right. only person there. Uh, you look them in the eye when they talk. You take them to nice places. You right. treat them well. Right. So now any other problem that you have when we're not together, if it's because of lack of response time, whatever, yeah. you're feeling insecure, that's your problem right, right. now. Right. When we're right. together, I treat you like a million bucks. You right. really don't have an excuse to be insecure. Right. Other than the fact that you happen to be scouring through my Instagram and saw yeah. that I, I made a new friend today. Right. Or oh, I liked somebody's picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's all on you. Am I where am I not treating you well? Where am I not making you feel like a million bucks? If you still have a problem with that, then it's your problem. Now, have you gotten to the point in your in in your own personal growth where you just you just don't take that shit anymore? Like you shut that down right away, or do you still do you still give credence to the to the complaints? Uh, I don't think I have a problem anymore because I don't. Because it's just everything is so righteous, you mean? I just don't do anything that I have to look over my shoulder. I mean, right. it's the first time in my life where um, I don't give a fuck. Look at, I can give him my phone. Go ahead. Go through it. Isn't that right. a great feeling, Mark? Isn't that a great feeling? Um, look at that shit. Look at it. I don't, I don't want to give it to you just on spite because that's my phone and get out of there. It's none of your business. Yeah. Right. This, it's become like the phone is like, uh, and anybody who wants to look through your phone, you should run. As fast yeah. as you can, because anybody yeah, who if you catch them time. once, if you catch them once looking through your phone and the relationship, run, run. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can't you can't live, have a relationship like that because they're but, not just looking through your phone. They know where your money is. They know where you hide your drugs. They're going to call the cops when things go ugly and tell them, oh, he's got I know where he's got his his, his gun over here. You but know even, aside, even aside from that, let's say like you're uh, one of the other people, Mark, who doesn't hide drugs, uh, you know, the average <laughs> Joe. Um, even I mean, come on, huh? you know, listen, <laughs> I leave mine out in the open. I don't care. Uh, but the point is this for me, even if they don't do all that or use it for a, if you don't think they'll use it for a sinister thing, once they start looking, it's not, it doesn't end. They don't, they're not satisfied. There's something inherently up with that individual where there's something inside of them that is in pain or damage or un untrusting due to history. That there's a flaw. There's a flaw there. And so yeah, if somebody's yeah. looking through your phone, you can't it can't be OK because the rest mm -hmm. of the relationship is going to be like that. Let me see the phone. Let me see the mm -hmm. proof. And if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you have to do that? You don't. You yeah. just don't. Well, it's it's a, it's also a situation like if you if the if the clock ain't broken, you can't fix it. If you're already not cheating, you can't not cheat more. So, <laughs> no, so, yeah, yeah. You, can't. So yeah, what, yeah. you know what you end up doing is you end up uh, you end up doing all this other stuff to 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 fulfill this this insecurity yeah. that that has nothing to do with you anyway like you're not going to be able to do anything to make her feel more insecure about herself because because it's internal anyway and by the way it's not going to fix it like it would be fine if it actually fixed it and that was the end of it but it yeah. doesn't okay so here's my phone you look through it and then you're okay and it's never you mm -hmm. know what i'm sorry i'll never do that again that's on me i got all i should go to therapy it, it doesn't fix it yeah. it's like ah oh, yeah, yeah all right you're clean this time i always like, said um i don't just go by how you treat me if i notice um a distance if i don't feel the love anymore right uh, it do, you don't have to tell me nothing, but right. if every time you show up, it, you can't wait to jump my bones, and you're cheating on me with my best friend, then we're both winning right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have yet to met the pe the girl who could do that. They could like do both, yeah, yeah, just like keep me happy and go out there and and and, and be doing what she's got to do. I, don't I really... remember this girl. I said to her. I, I said it was this was crazy as dawn. She was like, I was like, uh, you, you, uh, I said, you're, you're winning, right? And you're still fighting me. Well, this bitch and that bitch, I was like, but you're, you're winning. Like you, mm -hmm. you're with me. You, you have, you're, you're with me all the time. I do it. Why do you think it's not enough, Dante? Why do you think, what is inherent that it's not enough? Because. Ever? 
I don't think that people, I don't think, and, and, and women in general, I mean, I, and I would say this about men too. I don't think that we define what the happiness and what, what the peace looks like. And so it, it's sort of like, and, and, you know, we find the same thing when we, I think when we look at your career or your personal success, if you don't have uh, your success defined, right? What, what it is you want, what you want to do in this business, what you want to do in your job, what you want, what you want your life to look like, then all you ever want is more. I used to say, what, what do women want, want more than anything? And it's more, right? <laughs> so, so it's, but if it's not defined and, and so how rich and how crazy do you have to be in order for you to go? Well, I, I guess, I've made it. Whereas if you have specifically defined things about a relationship, like, oh, this is what I want. This is the type of relationship I want. This is what I want to do. I want somebody who's this or that who's caring and tender. And I want a great sex life. And I want these things. And you, once you've defined those things, if you get those things, right, it's like what you said, anything past that is gravy. So if you still running around, and I mean, we all, I've, I've never met anybody like that who can do that make me happy and not run around as well. Usually what's happening is I'm not getting everything that I want anyway. And then, and then I go, well, I, I guess I'll go get it someplace else. Mm -hmm. But there's a one thing that I, um, um, so, so I think because it's not defined that you don't really know what it is in the first place. Um, you know, we, we just watched, you know, Will Smith in a multimillionaire, in a in a household that where he's not respected and not happy, you got uh, uh, Johnny Depp, some chick is shitting in his bed. You know, what I mean, it's mm -hmm. like you you like when you think about these people, you would we would all agree that they're successful, but somehow there's no happiness in that, even in the context of how much money it is and how much fame and how much recognition, and it, it's a it's a weird thing where you know, even as a, as a grown man now is like, sure. There's more things that I want to do. There's more money. I want to make There's things that I'm, I still have goals, but right now I'm at a place where I can do what I want to do. If I want to buy something, I go buy it. If I want a new car, I can get a new car. If I want to move someplace, I can move someplace. If I want to, you know what I mean? Like you're literally, here's an opportunity to go to Vegas. You're getting up and you're going to Vegas. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if if I don't have the money for it right now, I will in a fairly short period of time. All I really got to do is buckle down, hustle a little more, and I can have whatever I want to have, you know. Um, and I think that when you're constantly chasing what everybody, what you, some kind of, you, when you haven't defined what it is that makes you happy, you're always in a place where you never know when you, you don't know when you've crossed the finish line, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I, I think, think I you don't do that. When we're busy the way we are, when we have uh, something that we're going after, yeah, we need uh, we need a companion for yeah. certain situations. So it's Vaca a rough situation. It's Vac vacationing, right? Yeah. When I go away, um, I want to have a companion. I want to be with my girl. You know what I'm saying? Because right. we're gonna have, we're gonna have fun together. Right. Um, there's a couple of times during the week when I have a down moment. It's nice to to go either have a dinner or be able to watch a game on TV. But because we're so busy, yeah, um, we don't really have the time uh, to to invest in all these brand new relationships. That's why it's nice to right. have a companion. Right, right. You have to figure out where do I want to spend my energy. Right. You know, if you want, if you have a goal and something that you're going after. Maybe it's not such a good idea to add another thing that right. of importance to Makes it, sense. like. Um, oh, sure, I got this TV show, but why isn't this bitch calling me back? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right, right. But we now, do that to ourselves. Now, if somebody's willing to fit into the scope of that, that's great. But we, if it's a problem and it takes something out of you, then I think you have to you have to mature to the point that you understand that it's taking from you. It, yeah, it's too many, too many uh, problems on the table, or too many things that we're trying to accomplish. Our egos get in the way. It's like, okay, I'm attacking this industry, but at the same time, 
uh, I'm not going to give myself, I'm not going to be one of these cats that I need to get to a certain level before I can, I can get my, uh, ju just dues when it comes yeah. to women or desserts or whatever I yeah, want. Yeah. Right, I want right. it on the way up too, just to yeah, show yeah. them I didn't need this success. Right. But what you're doing is you're really taking away from the, the, how big the success could actually be because your focus is all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to take a step back and say, you know what? I'm going to be a hermit for a minute. I'm going to go after this, put all my eggs in one basket, either that or just get a regular job and be a playboy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something, something that Tony Rock said to me when he first started doing, I remember when he first started doing comedy and he was like, look, man, I'm about getting on this stage. He's like, if you like me and you meet me at a show and you want to hang out, mm -hmm. this is where we're going to hang out. We're going to hang out at the club. Uh -huh. And after I do my spots and I've done what I need to do for me, then we can go and do something else. Mm -hmm. You, if, if if there's time for that, he's. But you understand that this is a priority, and and I think when you, I I don't think you gotta necessarily. I think if you set, if this is something that I've learned, you know, much more in my older age. Is this all you got to do is set the boundaries? People will do what you ask them. If you ask them like you deserve it, mm -hmm. you can have whatever you want. You can have you can have multiple chicks who who keep the you you can't have all of them. All of them are not, not going to do it. But if you're up front and you say, "Listen, this is I'm about this work. I'm about this comedy. I'm not trying to get attached. Um, I, I I like you. I like hanging out with you. But if you if this is you looking, I'm not with it. Half the time they'll even make an attempt to try and change your mind, even though you you've set those boundaries and then you got to get to the place where she's pressing against those boundaries and you got to go, listen, this is, I'm just not for you. And then they still don't leave, <laughs> you know, they're, no, I don't want to, you know, it, there's something about understanding what your value and having direction. Cause I think it's, it's almost genetic in terms of like instinctual in a way it's a guy with a, direction and a focus is attractive because if you're if you're showing that you have focus and direction she knows that one day that focus or in in certain situations you have that quality that can be pointed towards her and her happiness at 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 some point in time and so there's an attraction there as opposed to somebody who you know, you want to hang out with a motherfucker all day and you want a motherfucker every time you text, you want him to call you back. Nobody respects that guy. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> she, she don't he's like waiting. that guy. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you when you get off of work. Yeah, he's dropping you off in the morning, bringing you lunch, and then he's there when you get off of work. Who is yeah. that guy? Get rid and of then him. you and then you you're calling him, you don't you have something to do? You don't have friends to yeah. hang out with, and you and and, and now. This is the thing that you said you wanted it, but uh, it's that's not what you want. You want somebody who can, because that guy doesn't make you feel safe. That guy makes you feel like you're in charge. And, I, and, I, and I've never met a woman who wants a, a weak dude. And if, they, and if they do get a weak dude, they're chewing him up and spitting him out. Being disrespectful, I just sent Harry. I'll send it to you later. Um, okay. I sent, did you see that video I sent you, Harry? Which There's one is this that? new game show called, called "Unlock Your Phone." Oh so man, <laughs> this chick is there. The dude is there. He's like, I told you, I ain't cheating on you. I don't know. That. So they unlock the phone. Let, did you have? A, did he have any nude pictures? No. Did we check the GPS when he texts you? He was at the. You know, he was going to football games and stuff. Was it was it everything lined up right? Mm -hmm. And she, and he goes, well, so what do you think about that? And she goes, well, you know, my bad. <laughs> like she like mm -hmm. she's right. driving him crazy. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, my bad. And then he goes, she goes, well, the, the guy, the 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 host, because they all feel like they're gonna catch this guy because we're all pieces of shit. And he goes, well, you 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 you've been just torturing him for. For months now, about his cheating, and your only response is "my bad." And then mm -hmm. he goes, "She goes, well, wait, what do you want me to do? Say I'm sorry?" And <laughs> yeah, and uh, he goes, she, "She's like, well, my bad. I'm I'm proud of you." And then they go, well, "What do you think to the guy?" And he goes, "Here's here's what I think. 
Don't ever call me again. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in being in a relationship with you. Forget my number. And I wish you all the happiness in the world. Just stay the F away from me. And he walks off the stage. And I'm like, mm -hmm. God, that's exactly the thing that needs to be done. Because this is somebody who has insecurities and trauma that has nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. It probably never had anything to do with him. And so this, and, and even when she gets caught, she goes, well, you did good this time. It's the, the audacity to think that I have to live up to your expectations on, mm -hmm. but what happens is we get into that rut where we do, where we're, you know, where somebody is abusive and we get so accustomed to being abusive that we're now we, you know, it's like falling out of flight of stairs. You keep trying to catch your, Try to catch your balance and then you just keep falling faster. So it's no, I didn't do this. And then it's a situation where you're hanging out with your friends and you're calling her. Oh, we were hanging out. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, we're out, we're on our way to that. And it's a it's a way in which I find that women have a have a sick sense of wearing where you because we don't want no problems. Mm -hmm. Like peacefulness is the most important thing for us. And so it, it's almost like we start avoiding a conflict. So it's, oh, she don't, uh, I just won't, you know, because you, especially if you're being true blue, if you're being monogamous, you got nothing going on because you're literally going, well, I just, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want no problems. I don't well, want you're, problems. you're creating another person for this person. Yeah. yeah. You're not, when you first meet them, you're who you are, right? And, um, they apparently like that person. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, but then little by little, there's you find out there's one thing they don't really like about right. you. So, okay, uh, then there's another thing, and then there's another thing, and then before you know it, you're you're lying. You created a liar. I right. can't tell you where I'm really going because you don't like the fact that I I'm in I fantasy fun, football. I have fun when with you're not around fan. with you yeah. without you. Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't know, like, that, like that anything happens without you. Yeah, like I have the joke: uh, a woman's jo <laughs> a woman's job is to separate a man from fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's which is not true. Not all women are like this. Men do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Controlling and domineering, we're equal yeah. in that. But the point is, if you're in one of those relationships uh, where th no matter what you do, you can't seem to um, get this person to just be happy for a moment, or enjoy your company. Or maybe the moments of happiness are too spread out. There's too much fighting in between. It's not. It's not for you. This person has a problem. Get away from them. Move on. Um, now, you're initially, you you and your fia, fiance had some like some rough. I remember it was like mm -hmm. rough times in the beginning. What changed that, and how did that change into a position where you you were more comfortable about? where you were or was it was it that because you had a reputation already that it was kind of something i, I mean i'm just there were some things that. that i just being me like for example um i'm separated on my way to divorce mm -hmm. but we used to do a, a family vacation with six seven eight other families mm -hmm. and i used to coordinate a gig that i had in that area right so that I could make money while I'm there. It was only a couple hours that I'd be awake, away. Right. But now that I'm separated, I really shouldn't be going on this vacation anymore. Right, right, right. But I would still do the gig that same week so I can go and see my friends there. Mm -hmm. My kids were there. And it wasn't fair. It wasn't, mm -hmm. I, I should have. And we're not talking about uh, the first year or two. We're going into like, Three, three or four years relationship. really and you were still i'm doing still this? trying to i'm still trying to get get away with this you know what i'm saying so i now, had a couple, wh why was that was it just the kids or was it the family was it was it the kids it was because that's what i wanted to see my friends i wanted to hang out i didn't want to miss out and um i didn't care it's not that i didn't care i just i wasn't thinking about the way the other person felt it never right. really <laughs> your feelings never really concerned me. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. This is we're, we're, like uh, my ex-wife used to say. We're, the, you, this is your movie. We're just extras, mm -hmm. so <laughs> you can be a real prick and not even realize it. Right, right, right. And it's not like my ex-wife wanted me there either. 
Right. Even though I was just showing up to the beach and hanging out all day, the, it just it, it it made it awkward for her. Um, it made it, I guess, for everybody. Right, but right, right. I, I right. just I don't know. So I guess we do grow. We do mature as people. I I, I let that. Uh, I realized what I did. It took me a while to realize. Yeah. Put yourself in the other person's shoes, and see how you would like it. And um, you know, I got big feet, so squeeze it into these little shoes. Yeah. But I figured it out, and I realized, okay, I could see where I'm wrong here. I'm so it's just for you retrospectively having more empathy. Exactly. To, to what maturing. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can't really get away with all the stuff we want to do. Yeah. Like if you look at it like as a body count, instead of murders, look at it as a body count, the amount of how, how many you stacked up, how many women you had, how many you've right, been through. Right. If you're looking at it just on pure that, since when are we looking at how people feel or what you're doing to them? No, that's not even a part of that. It's the body no. count. It's the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was uh it was an addiction, an illness, a sickness, whatever you want to call it, but yeah, and we're talking about years and years and years of, of yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, um, you're also trained. It's like we have comics, there's comics in the business who steal jokes, who can't not steal jokes. Like they've been mm -hmm. stealing jokes for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you how do you stop that? When you literally have practiced this for 30 years, that this is when you see something like that, you just take it, do it, you know? Yeah, they, they come up with an excuse for themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you see, when you, if you're one of these joke stealers, you're like, oh man, that's funny. Instead of saying, why didn't I think of that? Or let me go back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh man, I think that's funny. Uh, I'm going to build on that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we, so you helped me come up with it. Right, right, right. <laughs> you're my, your joke. Yeah, yeah, you're my writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to break out in a minute because I got my Yeah, yeah you got to go to worry about it. We'll, 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 we'll about to wrap up anyway, Dante. Let's wrap it up. Um, go over to Patreon. Yeah, let's, let's, we're going to go over to Patreon and do some listener mail and some stuff. Um, man, I, I love you, bro. I miss you. I'm glad you, I'm glad you're finding a settling this motherfuckers are getting ready to give you some money. And uh, you're going to get a big old house with a pool. Maybe I'll come down and, and uh, bring my big naked ass and sit in your pool or something. <laughs> no, you're both you're both welcome to come. Uh, Harry, you look hey, great, man. by the way. Uh, thanks, yeah, bud. I like I'm your trying. hair. You look great. Trying. Let's get uh, let's get some food too. I mean, Joey was saying we yeah, yeah before before, before you go, uh, it would be nice, man. Before you leave, um, um what do you um, want to plug? Uh. I don't even know, man. I got my own podcast. It's yeah, called yeah. Uh, Police. It's a platform. It's called Police Off the Cuff. I do something called The Week in Crime and Policing. And it's with another retired detective, uh, this Angel Masonette, a great, great guy, very outspoken. You'd love him. Um, and we have fun with it. We, If we have heavy stories, you know, we start off with that. But then I always like to end on a few, you know, good, right. vigil good vigilante good. stories, yeah, yeah, yeah. Home, home invasion a home invader gets killed. I love those. <laughs> uh, um, I got a new one. That's uh, a car good one. Car guy attempted carjacking. Woman shoots him in the chest. Dead. Right. Like those, I get giddy when I hear that. It just <laughs> makes my day, man. I could that. Well, good story like that. A woman killing her uh, carjacker. That's a get, fun one. That's just a fun one. A nice. It one gets there. me through the day, man. Gets me through the day. God bless yeah. him. Yeah. Anywho. Um, I wish you guys all the best. I'm happy that I had a chance to sit down with you guys again. And uh, once I get to to Vegas, we'll hopefully I'll get on again and you can see my digs. I'll take you on a tour around that. Sounds good, man. Sounds Absolutely, good. Absolutely, bro. Thanks for doing the podcast, Mark. I appreciate it. All right. It. Thank you, guys. All, all right. the best. Peace. Later. Happy talk. Yeah. For my stuff, you could uh, always go to uh, all the social media at, uh, at Harry Terjanian. That's where I do all my uh, social media, especially the TikTok is starting to pick up and stuff. So... Follow me over there and on YouTube. And then also, if you want any type of uh, relationship advice, I do counseling as well. Email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com and we can set up rates. Yo, you can check me out. Uh, you know, Dante Nero, click on consult. I'm in the process of rebuilding the the website. Uh, so there's going to be merch and stuff on there coming up real soon. And uh, um, GYBB, get your balls back. Don't forget the Patreon, y'all. Uh, WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. We're gonna check you on the Patreon side. Don't forget the YouTube channel. Um, and also, all the people that are asking me if how they can get the old Beige Philip uh episodes, I'm gonna I'm working on that right now. 
So all of that stuff will be up on the website, dantenero.com and manschool202. Um, we out. Let's get it.